Hey guys, Kyle with Max Conversion here with you today to walk you through the full step-by-step -step, go high level Google Ads setup where we're going to make sure that we are able to track conversions accurately, but we're also able to track ROI, we're able to track revenue, one opportunities, and all link that back to Google Ads report inside go high level so that we're tracking everything properly. This is what we do for our clients at Max Conversion, making sure that it's tracked properly. Um, it's very important if you guys are running Go High Level that you utilize this feature. Super, super important and helps with figuring out the ROI of your campaign and whether it's making sense for you to continue running it or if it's not. So let's jump into it. We're going to start in the Google Ads account. And the first thing that we're going to do is set up our goals. So we're going to go over here to goals and we're going to create a conversion action. And for this example, we're going to use phone calls and form submissions. So if none of these are clicked, just click this conversion offline here. We're going to go ahead and select continue. And for this example, you know, we do want phone calls, we do want lead forms, but what we're going to do, just to keep things simple, since this is all imported, we're going to do converted lead. So you can do qualified lead, converted lead, you can do submit lead form, phone call. But for this example, all of it's the same. We're going to just do converted lead. We're going to add a conversion action, add a data source later. We're going to name this, uh, we'll call this just new phone call, right? Oop, new phone call. Don't use a value, we're gonna do one, we're gonna attribute it to the last click, and then we're gonna select done. Next, we're gonna add another conversion action, which is our form submission. And so we're just gonna form submission number two. We're gonna use, don't use conversion, one, and we're gonna do a last click attribution. Select save and continue, select finish, and we are good to go. So now we can see here that we have two conversion actions and uh, I'm going to rename this one really, really quick to uh, have that as number two as well. You can name it anything you'd like. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to want to make sure that we are we have the correct UTM tag. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to admin. We're going to go over to tracking. And we want to make sure that this tracking template is here. So if you guys don't have that tracking template, we're going to want to go to our uh, the this link right here. It'll be in the description. And what we're going to do is pull this tracking template right off of here. Copy that. And we delete that. Hit that. And hit save. Once that's complete, we're going to go ahead and add a script. What this is basically doing is making sure that this UTM param uh, this tracking template is set up correctly every time somebody clicks on your ads. What this will do is this will make sure that Google Ads is able to track, that Google Ads report in high level is able to track properly. So we're going to go here. Add a script, and we're just going to call this number two, GHL script. And what you're going to go ahead and do is select save. Once that saves, we're going to go back over to the script. We're going to go to frequency, hourly, save. May I ask you to authorize, so we're just going to go ahead and authorize here. And select save here. You are good to go. Since we already have a script here, guys, I'm going to go ahead and just remove this or disable it for now because we do already have this this precautionary tracking script um, basically what this does is just make sure that this tracking templates fired off every time that the Google ad is clicked next thing you're gonna want to double check is go back to accounts make sure auto tagging's on some accounts don't have that on but that could be an overlooked thing if you guys do not have it on so make sure that is on next what we're gonna do is we are good to go in Google ad side of things we're gonna jump over to the high level account and the first thing that we're going to want to do is make sure that we have a phone number, number pool set up. So we go to number pools. And in this account, we already have a number pool set up. Uh, it's not populating right now, but you guys will want to create a number pool and just go through here. All visitors is fine at name the number pool by the numbers and you're good to go. After you buy that number pool, what you're going to want to do is go to integrations. Then you're going to want to integrate your Google account here. So integrate your analytics account if you guys have it. If you don't have it already or if you don't have one set up, make sure you set up and follow a Google Analytics setup video on your website. Get that set up. Uh, make sure that your email is connected to both your analytics account as well as your Google Ads account. Analytics is set up. Make sure your uh, AdWords, Google Ads is set up properly. And you're good to go from there. So once this is confirmed integrated, what I like to do is refresh the screen. Sometimes you run into issues where the integration is not sticky, and for some reason you may need to reintegrate it, just make sure it's connected. 
So once you do this, do not click connected. This will actually edit and you're good to go. Next, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go to automation and we are going to scroll over and go to, we've got some folders here. I believe we have a Google ads folder. Let me double check. There we go. Google ads. So what I like to do is for conversion tracking is just set up a Google ads folder, create that folder. And then once it's created, we will add the conversion tracking in this account. There's already conversion tracking set up, but I want to walk you guys through it now. So we'll create a workflow, start from scratch, and we're going to be tracking phone calls and form submissions, right? So let's call this, let's call this uh, just number two phone call tracking. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to do call status. And we want incoming calls from a specific number pool to track. So we've got in number pool. The reason we don't use static numbers is because this does not, this will not track in go high level with the Google ads report very uh, properly. You want to make sure that it is a number pool, uh, you know, buy the four numbers, install it on your website. That's the best way to do it. So we've got that. And then we've got ads. So we add it to Google ads. We can add it to our new conversion right here. Hit publish, hit save. We're good to go. Now you're only good to go if you're running it to a landing page. So right here we have the website, right? This is not a landing page. This over here would be a landing page. This is a landing page. So only Google ads traffic is being sent to this page. If you guys are running it to your website, which we don't recommend, but if you are running it to your website, you're going to want to uh, set an extra step up. If you're running it to a landing page, only Google ads traffic, this setup is completely fine. If no other traffic, no Facebook ads, no organic traffic can reach that page, you're good to go with this. But if you have, if you're sending it to a website, you're going to want to make sure that you add this extra step. So. If you remember in the account, we set up a tracking template with the UTM source as AdWords here. And what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to set up a condition in go high level where when the contact details first attribution for the source is AdWords or the last attribution, right? Cause somebody could visit your, your website and then visit Google ads or vice versa. Somebody can visit Google ads and then your website. We want to have first or last here. We've got source as last is AdWords. Then we fire off the Google ads tag. So call comes in, it'll meet these conditions. First or last attribution is Google ads. It'll fire off, right? So, um, the only thing with this is if somebody looks at Google ads and then they look at your website, you may run into an issue where it's attributing that click over to Google ads, which can be partially uh, attributed to that. There's not really a good way that you can work around it. Um, this is the best work around we've had. And very rarely are you going to have experience an issue with this because, you know, last attribution will still if they click on your Google ad, they visit your website, click on your Google ad, it'll still attribute, um, this to Google ads. Um, but we also want to attribute if they click on your ad and then your website, we'd want to attribute that as well to Google ads. Now, if you guys don't want to attribute the first attribution to Google ads, you can completely remove that and just do the last attribution. That's completely fine. But some people want to try track the whole journey to where, you're able to, you know, they visit Google ads, they go to your website and track that. So if you don't want to do that, just go ahead and remove that and you're good to go there, right? So we're going to go ahead and add that first attribution just to have that there. And then what we're going to do is jump over to the form submission. Let's see here. We're going to jump over to the form submission and just duplicate this. And it's going to be the exact same setup. So we're going to duplicate workflow. Do number two, uh, form submission, conversion, conversions. So we don't need Google ad, a Google Tag Manager or anything for this. Uh, that's you don't need Google Analytics to set this up. You do need Google Analytics integrated with the website just for just just to have that integrated. But you don't necessarily need 
it to track these conversions. We do everything through high level. So a form is submitted. So there's two ways you can do this. First way, right, any form submitted, right? You're running it to your website. They visit the contact page. They submit the form. That's a conversion. They visit a, uh, a sub page. That's a conversion. If you guys do have a specific landing page, right, that you're only running, right, you're only running form, you know, a specific form for Google Ads, you know, Google Ads form, for example, here. Then what you can do is you don't need this condition. You know that when the form is submitted, it just adds it to Google Ads. It's very simple. If you're running a landing page like this, not running any other traffic, you should be good. Now, if you're running it to your website again, guys, uh, what I would do is I would just have it as the form is submitted, any form. You can also have surveys. So if you have a survey, uh, for example, this right here is a survey, right? So what do they need? What's their zip code? You know, kind of go through this. That's a survey. So if this or this is submitted, any of them, then what it will do is it will add ads as long as this is met, right? So if it's the first or last attribution is AdWords, then it will submit the conversion. This is the best way to have it set up, guys. Uh, this will track conversions 100% every time. Big thing here is settings do not allow re-entry, right? So remove re-entry. They can only enter it one time. If they click on your ads twice, they submit two forms. That's only one conversion. The big thing is with phone calls more so than form submissions. Uh, we've never really seen form submissions be submitted twice from one customer. And while we do have our goal settings set to one instead of every, it still does fire uh, multiple times. Phone calls are a big one. This is a mu you, you must, don't allow re-entry here. Uh, the reason why is because somebody calls this number. If their first attribution is, ad their first attribution will always be AdWords. It, if they call multiple times, you know, they call for a quote, they call a follow up on their quote, they call that same number, it will count as multiple conversions. So. You want to make sure that allow re-entry is not on. So, so this is the full setup, guys. What this will do is when we go to reports, we go to Google Ads reports, and there's not much data in this account. The data in this account is is very limited, right? There's only fifty dollars spent, but you can see here that you're you're already getting you got one conversion. All this is going to be tracking properly. But really what we're looking for is the ROI, the revenue, the sales, and the leads. So we've got a lead here, right? Shows up the form submission. It will also show up phone calls as well. Um, so what we we're going to do is we're going to go a step further and set up another automation. So we've got some automations already set up here that I'll just kind of walk you through. So whenever a phone call is, whenever a phone call happens, Phone call comes in, any incoming phone call, says is complete. What we do is we create, update the opportunity. We add the name, we add the opportunity source. So here's their, here is their source right here, right? Where can we attribute that to? And we open it, right? So you've got the, you've got the opportunity right, right, it automatically creates it. So what we see here is if we go over to opportunities, we've got a list of opportunities here and so with that what we're seeing here is we we, we add it to lead intake you in, schedule an inspection you send an estimate job is booked job in progress once you win a job right you have a certain vol value here right a thousand dollars here you're going to move this to one right or you can have it automatically send where we, if you have an invoice sent and it's paid it automatically moves that amount to one but if we move that over, right, you move that over to one, and I'll show you here with this one. So we move this to one. What we'll see here is if we go back to reports, we go to Google Ads, we can see here that now we have one sale. It'll show the sale. It'll show the, the amount. It'll show when it was created, show when it was won. It'll show the contact. It'll show our ROI, right? So now we have 1,050, 1,055% ROI based on you know the amount we, we put in we have the revenue and we have you know we have the cost here so this is this is I mean this is uh, let's go to last month this is extremely important information here um, now what you're seeing here right is you have leads here 
but sales ROI revenue does not count for this. It only counts for when the actual when the actual sale happened is when it counts. There's no way around that, but what you see here is it, it'll track properly. That way you guys are able to accurately track your ROI and your Google Ads Google Ads account and make sure that your campaigns are actually giving you some sort of return, right? So you're able to see average revenue, leads, sales, uh, revenue, and ROI. So I hope this video was helpful, guys, showing you how to track Google Ads, Go High Level, ROI, revenue, all in one platform. You don't need Google Tag Manager. You don't need any other, any other outside softwares besides Go High Level to track this properly. This went through conversion tracking and, and getting this set up. You guys are going to want to make sure that your automations are set up properly, to CRM properly, it, opportunities are being created, and then they're being won, and that revenue amount is being put in there. Because if you don't use your CRM properly, this will never matter. You know, you can see the leads, but the sales and the ROI is not going not gonna, to it's not gonna make sense. So I hope that video is helpful. If you guys do have any questions, leave a comment down below. I answer all in inquiries, questions, anything that you guys have, uh, and stay tuned for more helpful Google Ads content.